Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, good morning, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. Today, devotion of the Church of Nigeria, we're using the Daily Fountain and the team is Surrender. Our Test is Nahum chapter 1, verse 1 to 13. Let us pray. Gracious Father, thank you for a new day as this. Thank you for the gift of life and thank you for the privilege of fellowshipping with you, having a communion with one another with this devotion. Our God and our King, may your word come as the bread of life to impart us to quicken us, to give life and to build, to deliver and to help us to become more like you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, grant us light. The word is light. Illuminate our hearts. Illuminate our mind. Let the word bring about repentance unto us and draw us closer to you as we fellowship with you and with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nahum chapter 1, beginning from verse 1, the burden of Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum, the Echoshat. God is jealous. The Lord revenged, and the Lord revenged, and he is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He will reserve wrath for his enemy. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not all at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in, his, in the way, wide wind and in the storm and in the cloud at the dust of his feet. He rebuked the sea and make it dry. He dry up all the rivers. Bashan languished and Camel and the flowers of Lebanon languished. The mountains shake quick at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is bound at his presence. Yea, the world, and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rock are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemy. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not arise up the second time. For while they are folding together as stones, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble, fully dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Thus said the Lord, though they be quiet, and likewise many, Yet they shall, thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will bust the bounds in asunder. Now I will break his yoke off thy neck, and I will bust the bounds in sander. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to the Lord. The theme of this morning devotion, as we said before, is surrender. Surrender means to submit 
to the authority, to the control of the one to whom we have surrendered. In this devotion, the Lord, that in this devotion, the nation of the Assyria, whose capital is Nineveh, Nineveh is brought to fall. Their experience of a counter with God. Nahum, the prophet, announces the fall, the complete fall of Nineveh. And you will recall that another prophet before now had had a counter with Nineveh, and that is Jonah. That was about 700 BC, before Nahu, about uh, 600 BC. In the first encounter which Jonah had with the Nineveh, God sent him to announce to them that destruction is coming upon them because of their iniquity. And to the dismay of Jonah, they repented and turned to God in repentance and in prayer and fasting. And God forgave them and God blessed them. God gave them grace and so they built up. Economically, they became buoyant. Militarily, they become strong and mighty. And after that, they, their, their repentance was short-lived. They turned away from the Lord, like many of, like many today. After you are, when you are in trouble, you call on the Lord, and God answers your prayers. And then today, you are, you 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 look for a job, and then when you've not gotten a job, you seek the Lord, and the Lord gives you a job. After which, when the Lord begins to bless you, you forget Him. So also the, Nen the people of Nineveh, they became proud and forgot God. Just like the nations of the world today, like those, the nations that brought Christianity to us in the Western world, they were blessed of the Lord. And now they have forgotten God. They have replaced God with their knowledge and seem to fight against God, conspiring against God. Sin is a conspiracy against God. Sin is, is you know, you know uh, uh, the truth is that we are created by God to express, to show forth his glory. So when we turn away from his way and begin to live a sinful life, we are a, a, a hindering the glory of God being revealed. So you are contending, you are, you, are, you are fighting against God. You are contending against God. And so God will not accept that. But you, you look at it. So many at this point in time, God Call on uh, Saint his servant Nehu, Nahum to go and tell them the end has come. Although God, verse 3 says, the Lord is slow to anger. Yes, God is slow to anger. He bore with them between about 100 years and they turned away and then in their prosperity they forgot God. And God bore with them. But God will not continue to bear with iniquity, with sin, because sin is a rebellion against God, it is contrary to its nature. And so sin will be judged and be punished. And so God sent him to the Nineveh and that he will is completely wipe them out. So the kingdom of the Assyria was brought to naught because of their sin. Because they turned away from God. God is slow indeed to anger, but he will not allow sin to continue forever. So God will punish sin. God will punish sin. If we depart from sin, God is ready to welcome us. Like the, like the prodigal son who left his parents, carried all that, the words that the parents gave to him and squandered them. When he began to suffer, when problem came, he came back to his mind and returned to the Lord. And the Lord embraced him and received him. But when you turn to the Lord and the Lord has embraced you and you turn away from the Lord into sin and refuse to come back, Destruction awaits anyone who turns away from the Lord and living the life of sin. Like in Nineveh, Jonah proclaimed the gospel, the, the message of the Lord to them. They repented, but they turned away from the pathway of God and went back to the way of, of their hearts and then continue in the way of sin, oppression, walking against one another. No, 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 the scripture, the Bible is God's own manual for our living so that it tells us how we live our life. It is for our own good. It's not, destructions are not for, it's not for our destruction. So, but when you live and you follow the instructions of God, it is for your own benefit, for the benefits of us all. Just say, for instance, when 
a parent, instruct the children not to play with fire. It is not that the parents are against them, but because the fire burns. So sin burns. There is a destruction inside sin. So when you go out of the way of the Lord and walk in your own way, in your own pleasure, thinking that you are, you are enjoying, you are, bringing, you are opening the door for destruction to come upon your life. And so, beloved, the word of God comes to us today. And the only cure, the only place of safety against the wrath of God, against sin, is in God. When you turn to him, you are secured. Like the songwriter says, Rock of ages, clear for me, let me hide myself in thee. It's as you turn to the Lord from your sin, as you hear the gospel, as you hear the word of the Lord, you turn back unto the Lord, repent of your sin, you are secure from the destruction that is coming upon the world. Because the world has gone out of their way and begin to pursue their own agenda, thinking that life is all about here. Life is not all about here. So we must turn unto the Lord, for God will judge sin. Don't forget what God, what Jesus shared, drawing our attention to what is behind after now. When he talked about the story of uh, a, a, the rich man and Lazarus, when they transited from this world, he said the rich man found himself in hell, a place of torture, a place of torment. The worm don't die. There's a gnashing of teeth. Jesus said it is a place of torture. And of course he said, if your hand will make you to go to hell, cut it off, it's as serious as that. If it is your eye, pluck that eye off because it is better to go to the place of rest with God than to be in hellfire. That place is a place of God's anger being vested upon sin. It is not you. You are not. You are, you, he lost us. He lost the sinner, but he doesn't love the, 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 that sin. And so that is why we are, his, uh, today's devotion is drawing our attention to the, the, to the people of Nineveh whom God forgave and blessed and then make them to become strong. They become so, so powerful military-wise and they became the leading uh, uh, powerful nation in their own time. And therefore, they become so proud and went their own way. And the end is total destruction. In the same way, if you hear the word of God, turn unto him, he saves you. He bless you. He will, he will lift you up. But if that enter into your mind, into your heart, like many people, when they are young, when they, were, when they are growing up, as the Lord blessed them, but sometimes they were in the choir or God gave them, a, gave them the gift of singing. They use it in singing and the Lord are blessing them. They veer away from it and begin to use it to honor the devil. Live it their life. Oh, God gave you beauty. Oh, because of that, you are using your beauty to the way you like. There is a structure on how we should dress. There is a structure on how we should live. There is a structure on how we should relate with one another. If you go contrary to that, the fire of sin will consume you. There is fire. There is destruction in sin. Therefore, run away from it so that you are not destroyed. Run away from greed so that you are not destroyed. Run away from fornication so that you are not destroyed. Run away from bitterness so that you are not destroyed. Run away from unforgiveness so that you are not destroyed. What the scripture, the Bible is here for us to guide us on how to live our life. Just like Jonah went proclaimed to the people of Nineveh on how to live their life and to repent. And they, they did repent, but they went back, turning back. Is a very serious thing. If you turn away, your former good will be forgotten. It is like uh, a woman who is pregnant and people are expecting with great joy that a baby is coming only to have miscarriage. If you are living in sin, the expectation of the joy of the Lord upon your life will be a miscarriage and it will be a misfortune. This is why the word of God is coming to us this morning that look at their life, look at the people of Nineveh. 
they became destroyed. They came, they were destroyed at last, even after they have enjoyed their privilege when they repented. God is not mock. Whatever a man sows, that is what he will reap. And so we must not lose sight of the fact that God will judge sin. There's no way he can continue. You can continue in sin because he's the God of love, because of grace. Then he will allow you to continue to, 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 to continue like that with sin. He said, God, God is God of love. Therefore, uh, grace will abound. No. You just imagine it. If you have food you enjoy so much, and then the food became decayed and already rotten, because you like to eat, will you eat that food? You will throw it away. So if you corrupt your nature through sin, no matter how good it was before, no matter what you have been doing before, if you corrupt this nature, the Lord will throw you away. Even if you even get to heaven, assuming you were allowed to get to heaven with this corruptness on your life, just look at it. You will, only you will run away from heaven. You will say, no, I can't be here. I want to go to hell. And yet hell is not a place of pleasure. Let me give you an example. If you are wear dress, beautifully dressed, with white, royal white, and then as we're eating, now you soil your, the, 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 your dress with oil. And you walk into the midst of people and you notice this, this oil in your, in your clothes. Nobody will tell you, you only you want to walk away out of that place. That is the same thing. When sin is found in your nature, when sin is found in your garment, you can't de de you will just send, you will tell God, send me to hell. May God not send us to hell. We will repent now. On this side of the divide, if you, if you turn unto the Lord, ask for forgiveness, just like they did at, the, at, the, at, the, at Jonah's message, you will be forgiven. But when you have repented, ensure you continue in this way. God is not interested in fools who say today they are in and tomorrow they are out. Don't be caught dead without repentance. Christ is the only place of safety. The only place of safety from sin is God. So remain in him. Sin takes you out of it. Sin exposes you to destruction. Throw it away. Ask for grace. If you repent, now he will forgive you. He is willing to forgive us now. But the fact is that when you have been forgiven, you need grace to continue to walk in the path of righteousness. So how do you, how do you garner that grace? It's not only just studying the word of God, but meditating on it. Because the thought of your heart determines your actions. So when you give yourself, you surrender yourself with things that, are, that will draw, lure you into sin, it will become your meditation. And then it will become your actions. So ensure that you make the word of God your meditation. You surround yourself with the, with the things of God. That's why in Colossians chapter 3, Paul, by the Holy Spirit, advised that if you are in Christ Jesus, look unto the things, meditate, on the things which are above. Keep your attention on the things which are above, not on the things on earth. So if any man be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ is seated in heaven. Set your affection on things above, not on the things on earth. The word set your affection from the Greek word means exercise. Entertain, entertain your mind with the things of God, the things above, the word of the Lord. Remember, remember uh, 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 Joshua, the instruction he gave to God gave to Joshua, disciple of uh, of Moses. After he, Moses had died, he said, "Let not this word depart from your mouth. Not only depart from your mouth, you should meditate on it day and night. Think on it." Fill your heart with it. Entertain your mind with the word of God. Not entertaining yourself with pornography. Not entertaining yourself with uh, nudity. Not entertaining yourself with uh, what, whatever they show on uh, whatever Big Brother, uh, African Magic, and the rest of them. When you entertain yourself, your heart will be filled with these things. And before you know, you go back into sinning. Please 
hear the word of God comes to us, surrender to his instructions. Yield to his word. When you do that, the word of God will take hold of you. You will be empowered by the word of God. Let me give you another example. When you sit by fire, you, after a time you begin to, you feel warm by the fire. So in other words, the fire begins to trans, transport into your life, into your body, its property. So when you have intimate relationship with God, when you are intimate, you have intimate relationship with God, you are meditating on the word of God, you, you take time to fast, you take time to pray, you take time to worship the Lord, you are standing with the fire of God. So God's nature will be imparted into you. You will be strengthened with from within. And you are able to say no to sin. See, we have no more dominion over you. But that you are born again, after you are born again, you still go back and get yourself surrendered with the things that will pull you down. The things of the world. Soon as you go back into the world, soon as you be like the Nineveh, when they have their sin, the pleasure of religious world, they forget about the instruction, they forget about the message that was given to them. And again, what another thing we learn from the, the Nineveh people is that about 700 BC, Jonah proclaimed the message to them. In about 600 BC, which means a number of them would have died. I mean, perhaps they did not pass the message to the next generation. So we should ensure that this gospel, this warning, this instruction, we pass it to our children, and our children pass it on to their children from generation to generation. And that's why the Bible is there. They make love with the word of God. B, make God's people your closest friend. And then you will see that you will be empowered, you will be strengthened to live a life of righteousness all the way. We are delivered from the camp of our enemy to live the rest of our life in holiness and in righteousness unto the Lord. That is why. So surrender yourself, yield yourself to him. As you yield yourself to him, as you give yourself to, to the word of God, as you give yourself to the meditation of the word of God, as you surrender yourself to doing this, his will, you will be so empowered and it will become your lifestyle. Holy living become your lifestyle. Righteousness become the manifestation of your life. May the Lord bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Rock of ages, bless for us. Let your people hide themselves in you. May as we hear the word and as we come to you daily, we ask that your nature will manifest in our life. Impart us with your righteousness. Impart us with your love. Impart us, impart your people with the 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 the. The, 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 the wisdom, the knowledge, the nature, the mercy, the forgiveness nature of God so that we can walk, we will continue in this life so that it will be well with you. It, the Lord is here to save you. And as you turn away from your sin, may your sins be forgiven. And may the Lord give you power to make wealth. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift you up. May the Lord exalt his name in your life. And as he does, as you do that, as you experience that, may you not go back to sin again. Receive grace to remain with the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.